we, we try to encourage that we want to have as much time in our conversation listening as we do talk. I want to um, talk about another kind of words when it comes to our kids and talk about the person who has a lot of words. And I want to talk about this on both ends because there are people who just have a lot of words that they need to use up. You know, I forget what the number is, but you know, everyone has like, you know, I don't know, 400,000 words in a day, you know, um, that they need to get out that the average person, I guess, but some people it seems like they have 4 million words and then other people have like 400 words. <laughs> and I have a, a, a child who loves to talk and I, I love hearing her talk and I love talking with her and she is such a delight. But sometimes I just have to say, you know what, honey, we, we did it today. As a matter of fact, it was lunchtime and she was just talking, 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 talking. And I just say, you know what, honey, for five minutes, I want you to practice silence. And she responds so well to it. I mean, she'll just say, okay. And so for five minutes, she was just quiet and she didn't say anything. And then she realizes like, okay, I am talking too much. And she'll ask me sometimes, you know, am I talking too much? Yes, honey, you are. Let's Mm -hmm. cut down on the words. But sometimes mom is the one who has a lot of words. And when it comes to speaking with our kids, and you, you talked a little bit about this for the child who's the introvert we can just go on and on and on and on and just talk nonstop to where our kids are just like, please be quiet. Um, so can we talk about kind of both ends of that? The kid who talks too much and the parent who talks too much. Yeah. Um, I, I identify with those experiences. (laughs) We have a similar, um, word lover in our household who, um, was constantly chatting and chatting and chatting and the others were not. And, um, it got frustrating and, I, I kept coming up with James uh, 119, be quick to listen, slow to speak. And so we, we kept, we, we tried to encourage that we want to have as much time in our conversation listening as we do talking. Because if all you're doing is talking, then you're not hearing the other person and you're actually shutting them out. And so uh, we tried, to, again, we tried to go back to those basic principles that they can follow, understanding their love to talk and allowing them, just like you said, you know, five minutes and then talk again, let's talk again and catch up. But understanding each other's differences, each other's uniqueness. We we try to tell the others, understand the uniqueness of this one, understand that they're wired this way. And God's going to use that skill. Absolutely. That's a skill Yes. that, that for their future. And sure enough, I can, I mean, I'm thinking about it right now, that child as an adult is doing something where words and a lot of words are really, really important in their career. And so he made this child that way. And so we have to first appreciate that. And mom and dad, if one of you were like that, he made you that way for whatever good purposes he has. But we, if we're the ones who are doing lots of words, we need to remind ourselves to do as much listening as we are speaking Mm -hmm. so that we are telling the other person, you matter to me. And I want to hear your story. I want to hear what you have to say because you're important too. If we overwhelm and do so much, then we really were, we're ignoring them. Yeah. So it, it's a balance and it, it takes time and it takes training. I still need training. I'm not, I'm not one of the ones that speaks a lot of words. I don't say enough in our household. I'm the quiet one. And so I have to learn to start communicating. Oh, I haven't talked to this child today. I mean, just, you know, I mean, if they're not talking and I'm not talking. I'll just get my little world and do my old things. Yeah. And so um, you have to identify these are areas. Okay. To build a relationship, I've got to connect. And so I've got to listen to them and I got to talk to them. And if, if, if you're the parent who does tons of talking, then, you know, talk to them purposefully and specifically, mm-hmm. but then hear them, ask them questions. Don't pepper them with questions, but ask them questions so that they can then join your conversation. Yeah. So you're not just talking at them as one-sided. I think one of the cool things about another cool thing, there are so many about homeschooling is um, when we get, we have, we want to have quality time with our children mm-hmm. and really you can't have good quality time without quantity time yeah. because those important conversations happen during the course of your day. Right. You might be reading something from history and reading about it. And all of a sudden one of the kids will pose this really deep question that you can tell is personal. And you can say, book, go aside here. Let's talk about this. Yeah. We have the time. Here's an important point. You know, I used to try to set like, and we still, and these are good to do, have little um, 
dates with your with your children individually yeah. and have some tea or whatever and or take them someplace. And conversation can happen there, which is great because there's fewer distractions. But I started feeling like I would say, okay, we're at our, we're at our quality time now. We, we got our ice cream. We want to talk. Go. And I would say that to them. They'd look at me like with this blank stare. Right. What are we supposed to talk about? I have nothing to say right now. I mean, you could tell. And I would be like pulling it out of them and trying to get them and realizing I'm, you know, sometimes we just sit and enjoy being together. And I would, I, I was feeling defeated. And I realized I can't make those quality times happen. I can enjoy the process. And yeah. because we're with them so much, we have the opportunity to grab the quality times when they happen and have those communications and have those deep conversations and feel free mom and dad to say, I don't know. That's a hard one. Let's, let's, let's find out, or let's pray about this. Or, you know, I want to know just, if it's important to you, it's important to me. Yeah. Um, again, there's that relationship, but it's using our words and it's by listening, um, which helps the, the loquacious ones, the ones who like to use lots of words, um, to know that they're being heard mm -hmm. and they, um, and they need to hear as well. It's, it's a two way right. communication is two ways. So they can say there are 500 words in, in one sentence and here <laughs> you're 10, as long as they're giving some time for the seesaw to go a little bit back yeah. and forth. Yeah, yeah. that's great stuff. <laughs> I, I tell my girls all the time, especially the one who likes to talk a lot to ask questions to other people, you know, when, when she meets, especially when she meets new people, you know, don't just tell her all about you and your life and your world, but ask questions, you know, where are you from? You know, we, we do a lot of traveling, of course. And so my girls are often in situations where they're meeting new people and, you know, ask their name. What do they do? What do they enjoy? You know, what, whatever the questions are. And so, um, you know, that my, my girls have gotten pretty good at that. And I think that's a really good thing for, uh, especially the big talkers. 